Okay, so where we left off, we finished the song, except for this one keyboard part I want to add. And the other thing I was noticing when I went back to check the original song was that there's this fade-in of the acoustic guitar, and it goes on for a long time. And we only played two, actually four bars. I'm going to zoom in to the guitar right here. And we can see from, we came into the song at bar two, and the, the vocals come in at bar six. So we're playing four bars of guitar intro. What if we want, let's say, 12 bars of guitar intro? What do we do? How do we do that? So I can copy and paste that guitar, but it's going to go over. So this is where we're going to use a new mode. It's called shuffle mode. The thing is, if we use shuffle mode, what shuffle does, if I copy this and I paste it, it's going to move with shuffle mode. I first go to grid mode, and I highlight the four bars. I make sure that up at the top here, I have four even bars right there. That number is so important. So if I, if I duplicated this, it's going to go over what's there. That's not what I want to do. If I dupe, go to shuffle mode and I duplicate, watch what happens. I'm going to make this track a little bigger so you can see it. Um, and if I duplicate, boom. So we, it's hard to kind of tell, but it took this guitar part and then it moved everything back. But then the whole rest of the track is not going to be right, right? So I'm going to undo that, command Z, undo. So we need the whole song to be moved back by these four bars, right? So this is where we, we're going to, at some point, get into groups. I'm going to turn off shuffle mode. Shuffle mode can be really, really dangerous, so you use it and you get the hell out. Because what happens if you're editing something and you hit delete and you're in shuffle mode and you don't know? It's going to move everything up. So shuffle mode is, if you copy and paste, it's going to move things back. And if you delete things, it's going to move things forward. Shuffle mode is being used for arrangements, to make different arrangements. And doing what we want to do right here is to take the acoustic guitar, and instead of making it four bars, we're going to make it 12 bars. But we need to insert those eight more bars, and we need the whole song to be pushed back, right? So down here, you'll notice in the edit screen, if you don't have this, um, you'll notice here, because I there's this little arrow here at the bottom left corner, Boom, it opens this, this bin. This is your tracks, and this is called groups. And what groups are going to be great for is they're, if you have all the, your drums, and say you've got eight different tracks of drums, you can make a drum group. So when you raise the volume of one drum, it raises all of them. It's great for background vocals, great for groups of everything. So, But we want all the tracks. And you'll notice the first group, we haven't created any groups, but the first group is all. We're going to choose that and say all, now you'll notice when I highlight from bar 2 to bar 6, it's highlighting the whole song. I'm going to double click on the zoomer so you can see the whole song. There we are. Great. And we also want it to move our markers, right? So we're going to include, I, I held the shift key. If I didn't hold the shift key, it would not include the markers. So I'm going to do that one more time. I'm going to highlight from here to here. I'm going to look at these numbers. I'm going to make sure I'm at four bars. I'm starting at bar, the, the beginning of the song, and this is the end of the guitar part, and I'm going to hold the shift key, and I'm going to click in the marker area. Now, we're going to go to shuffle mode very quickly, and we want this guitar part twice. So, we're going to use duplicate. Now, watch what happens. I'm going to hit command D. Everything moves forward, and I'm going to hit it one more time. Everything moves forward. Now, I'm going to get out of shuffle mode. So now we have 12 bars of intro uh, of the acoustic guitar. You can see where this is really great. If the intro is too long, you can go to shuffle mode and delete it. Always go to grid mode first before you use shuffle mode, because if you don't delete or add in even bar numbers, your song's going to be all screwed up. So uh, now we've got double the acoustic guitar thing, and then I'm going to turn off the all group, and I'm going to zoom in to this seam right here. And you'll see where it took a little snippet of the vocal part. We don't need that. You just double click on a region. And you can see this is a little sloppy right in here. So I'm just going to, you can just double click on with the selector tool. I'm going to delete that. And this is kind of wonky right here. So I'm going to grab the trimmer tool. And I'm going to make sure the trimmer tool is in standard. And I'm going to drag this this way. So it looks like this is pretty good. And then I'm going to drag the, I'm going to get the selector tool. I'm going to do a little crossfade right there. I'm going to fade. OK. I'm going to hit the tab key to go to the next edit point. You see it's going to the next from edit to edit. Now we hear that wonky part again because we duplicated it twice. I'm going to delete 
this vocal right here. I'm going to delete this crossfade. I'm going to delete this little region right here. I'm going to delete it. I'm going to grab the trimmer tool again and fix that same spot. And there we go. And I'm going to grab the selector tool. And I'm going to highlight right there. Command F, crossfade. And now I'm going to double click on the zoomer. And now we have the whole song. And you'll notice it, it duplicated our markers as well, and it moved our markers back. So it's really important if you're using markers and you're using shuffle mode that you use your marker track as well when you shuffle things. Because otherwise, it's going to say, here I am sitting in my tin can, two, eight bars before where it comes in. So you, you kind of get the gist. So that, that's shuffle mode. And the last thing I'm going to do is get you guys to like, go through this song and set some levels and set some pans. So we're going to go to Command Equals to the Mix Screen. And you can see everything right here is panned right up the center. And if you listen to the original track, he does a lot of panning. They do a lot of hard panning in early music. The Beatles use it a lot. But in this song, I believe the crash is on the left. So you notice the crash is a stereo track. So we're just going to take that and pan it. We're going to just pull down on that, and we're going to pan it there. The acoustic guitar, I don't know where that is on the track. Um, the harmony vocal, I know, is, there it is, it's on the left side. I know the main vocal is over there on that side. I think the octave is on the left side. So, and then you can go through and set some levels. And the other thing you want to create when you're about to start mixing is a master fader. So we're going to command shift in new track. We want a stereo master fader. And what that is exactly what it sounds like. It's a it's a fader that controls the volume for the entire song. So when you do like a fade out or a fade in of the song, which we're going to do, we're going to automate the master fader. We could also automate the acoustic guitar track, but I'm going to show you how to do that. But this is like let's listen real quick. This is the whole the whole song, and I'm going to save. And so we've got a master fader. We've got 12 bars of the acoustic guitar. We've had everything shuffled backwards, and now we're going to add a keyboard part with a delay, and then we're going to mix, and then we're going to export as an MP3 file. And uh, let's get going. <laughs> 